Okay, Ryan and everybody else out there, we're going to start our new botany exploration, botany madness. And right now I'm at the Charlotte Environmental Center and I'm going to share with you some of the neat uh, plants that are native to Florida. And uh, we'll talk about zones and uh, here we go. This is called a golden creeper, one to two feet, and it's fairly flat. It requires full sun, excellent salt and drought tolerance, and it grows great in zones 9 to 11 in low, compact, dense, woody ground cover with graceful arching branches and evergreen, shiny, needle-like leaves. Small tubular pink flowers are followed by gold berries, both year round. An excellent wildlife attractor. The golden creeper, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, here we are at the All Native Garden Center and Plant Nursery. Get real, go native. I'm just gonna walk around and take a look at some of these. And what they do is they take these and then they plant them out here in the nature preserve. So, let's take a look. I'm sure you've seen these before. These are called coral bean. They have a medium rate of growth, require full sun to partial shade, another good drought and salt tolerance plant and they'll tolerate a wide range of soil conditions but does best in rich dry soil small thorns likely and these do great in zones 8a through 11 it's a deciduous flowering accent or barrier shrub here we have elderberry and as you can see on the sign they have the taxonomy Sambucus canadensis and it can get between 6 to 10 feet tall and wide and they grow pretty fast. They like a lot of sun. They grow well in zones 8 to 10 and they will flower and a large shrub that forms colonies by root suckers. Large clusters of white flowers all year round that peak in spring and then they're followed by masses of small dark edible purple berries. That attract wildlife. Pretty cool. Here we have the fire bush. And the taxonomy here is Henalia patens. It can grow up to 12 feet tall. And it's a densely branched, multi stem, large shrub or small tree with evergreen green and burgundy red leaves as we can see here burgundy red leaves and it too will have red and yellow flowers and they attract butterflies birds and hummingbirds and they reseed readily the firebush here we have scarlet pentas and the taxonomy name here is pentas i don't know how to pronounce that one the ensalada, <laughs> we'll go with that. They get to be two to four feet tall, a lot of sun, and they're good drought tolerance. That's what they have. So an upright, dense uh, perennial with showy clusters of dark red flowers that bloom most of the year. Wow, see how beautiful those are? And they may be pruned to maintain their height. And they, again, an excellent butterfly attractor. Yeah, I was attracted to these myself. All right, let's get a couple more. Here's what we call bay cedar. And it's a delicate evergreen shrub or a small tree. And uh, it has a rounded crown, crown and erect to ascending branches with flat, fleshy, gray-green leaves. Useful for coastal areas and saltwater canals. Pretty cool. And then right next to it, we got the wax myrtle. 
This is wax myrtle, and I'll read to you what this says. Large multi-stem dense shrub, dense rather, shrub, or small tree with evergreen fragrant leaves. Let me smell one. Yeah, they are fragrant. They have waxy berries on the females, and it's a source of bayberry candles. How about that? Useful as a privacy hedge as well. Excellent wildlife attractor. The wax myrtle. This is interesting. This is called Kuntai or Kunti. I can't tell. The taxonomy name is Amia Pamilla and uh, grows good in zones 8 to 11 and uh, can get to one or two feet tall, but it's a low compact perennial, uh, usually wider than it is tall. Overground stem and a cluster of evergreen fern like. Uh, basil leaves, a conspicuous erect cylindrical cone forms on separate male and female plants. The female plant bears large fleshy bright orange seeds. Kuntai. Pretty cool. What do we have next to the Kuntai? We've got Mrs. Shula's Delight. The, uh, the sun, the shade here. And here we have densely branched compact shrub with a symmetrically round shape evergreen. Grows great in South Florida with small glossy dark green leaves. A profusion of clusters of small white fragrant flowers in spring is followed by black berries that ripen in the fall. Again, another excellent wildlife attractor. And I think here you can see some of the small buds on there. I don't even know if you can see it. It's really shadowy out here. Okay, let's keep going. Ah, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we have wild coffee. All right, check this out. It can go up to five to 15 feet. And uh, interesting enough, the uh, taxonomy name on here is um, Psychotria nervosa. Sounds more like a psychological disorder than a, a wild coffee plant. But anyway, it's upright, multi-stemmed, small woody shrub with evergreen quilted leaves, clustered, clusters of showy fragrant white flowers in spring and summer are followed by red and black berries. Excellent wildlife attractor, especially songbirds. Cool. All right. And right over here, we have some pretty bushy, beautiful shrub like plants called Simpson's Stopper. You don't believe me, here it is Simpson's 